This is FIS 2320 Computing 2 and this is the third unit on the set of video tutorials on syntax. Um, for students registered on the module from the University of Leeds, the uh, Jupyter Notebook this is derived from, as well as a PDF file version of it, are downloadable from the Minerva uh, pages for the module. So in the first two units we covered the basic Python syntax for expressions um, and variables for input and output functions and looked at the use of for and while loops. And in the second unit, continued that to look, talk about the flow control statements break and continue, um, the use of an else clause on a loop, and also enumerate and zip functions, uh, which can be used to make loops uh, simpler to work with. This unit is going to primarily concentrate on data structures, uh, and in particular one of the most common ones of those, the dictionary. So in computer science, a uh, data structure is simply a way of organizing related information so that the relationships are made clear. So kind of the simplest example is probably a list, which is just a simple sequence of values. And we can understand that the values in the sequence are always kept the same, and therefore the relationship that the second value comes after the first value and before the third value, for example, um, is always maintained. So here we're going to talk about another common data structure used for holding a collection of different values, and that's the dictionary. So whilst a list keeps track of different values by the order in which they uh, appear in the list, a dictionary keeps track of values in terms of a key or a name for it. So with a list we can always refer to an item by giving its index, which is simply an integer which starts at zero and counts up uh, for each item in the list. With the dictionary we have some key. This is often a string, but it doesn't actually have to be a string, uh, which is essentially the name of the value, and so we can refer to the value by name. This is actually quite a useful concept in uh, scientific computing because there are in fact lots of in, uh, situations where you have bits of data that have a um, that need to be sort of kept together but are, are most naturally referred to by a name rather than having to appear in a certain order. So for example you might be talking about the um, name or the description of a sample which you're doing an experiment on or the date of that experiment um, or information about the settings of the equipment being used um, or the environment the experiment's been done in such as a temperature or a light level. Um, essentially all the data that, that belongs um, during the needs to be kept together uh, during the experiment um, and being able to refer to it by its name rather than some arbitrary integer makes it much easier to keep track of. So in Python to create a dictionary you need to get together a set of keys and their associated values um, where you've got one value for each key. Um, so you can do this in a number of different ways. There's a syntax where you use curly braces to specify a key, colon a value, comma a key, colon a value, comma a key, colon a value. Um, you can also use the dict um, function, uh, which will you can give it a list of pairs of key and value, key and value, and so on. Um, and you can also create an empty dictionary and then add each key and value to it separately. So this bit of code does um, that. It creates three different dictionaries, which are all basically got the same keys and values in them, uh, using the three different forms of syntax. So D1, we're using the curly braces key colon value syntax. The D2 dictionary is created with the dict function using pairs, a list of pairs of key and value. And in the third one, we create an empty dictionary and then we uh, simply go around in a loop and assign keys to values inside that loop. Um, and then we can go and print out the value of the dictionary. When you print a dictionary, Python will use the curly brace syntax by default. Um, and we can also just show that those three dictionaries are in fact equal to each other. One thing to note is that there's in fact no guaranteed uh, or no necessary guarantee about the order in which the keys are stored in the dictionary. Um, although as it turns out actually from Python 3.6 onwards um, the, the order is always um, the order in which you stored them in the dictionary. Um, this is different from a list where the order in which items are stored is sort of intrinsic to how the list works. 
for a dictionary, what's important is is how the keys is accessing things by its key rather than by the order in which it appears. So it makes no sense to go and talk about the first item in a dictionary or the third item in a dictionary. Um, there's no intrinsic reason why one item appears before another item. OK, so um, if you want to go and set uh, read and, and set values in the dictionary, it's worked a bit like lists in that you um, have square brackets and then um, you have to index um, uh, how to find things. So with a list, you're indexing with a number. But with a dictionary, we're using the key to work out which value you're actually working with. So here we've got examples of um, reading a particular value from a dictionary or changing a particular value in a dictionary. Um, and we can show here that we can read one value in and then change it to a different value. You can also test whether a particular key is contained in a dictionary with the um, fairly straightforward in operator. So um, key in dictionary will be true if that key belongs in the dictionary and false if it isn't in the dictionary. You can also remove um, a key and its value from a dictionary. Um, so this uses just del. Um, so if you do del d3 and then the key, we're removing that key from the dictionary d3 and along with it the associated value. You can also use a for loop to iterate over a dictionary. So in fact what happens here is you're going to, when you do for a thing in a dictionary, what you're actually iterating over is the list of the keys. So in this loop here, you see what we're printing out is the three keys that are defined in the dictionary. Of course, we could use that to go and get at the values that are stored in the dictionary. Um, one way of doing it would simply be to use the same uh, format we were using before to access a particular key in a dictionary. And that's what we're doing here. Um, and then just doing a nice bit of a printout to show what we've got. Um, but in fact, there's uh, other uh, ways you can iterate over the, the keys or the values or both the keys and the values. So um, dictionary.keys um, is a, a method that will give you um, each key in turn. So that's basically the same as if you just did for key in D1. Um, for key in D1.keys does gives you the same results. <coughs> um, Dictionary.values will give you each of the values in turn, and dictionary.items will give you a pair of a key and a value. Other useful methods you get for working with dictionaries. Um, so as I've said, keys, values and items, these are all methods. Um, and just note that when we talk about a method, it's basically a function that does something with a particular variable or value. So in Python, it's written as variable dot, and then the method, and then the brackets like you have with a function call. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about this in object-oriented programming for a longer description of what methods actually are and how they work. So dictionaries have quite a few useful methods that can help you work with them. So one is update. Um, so update simply merges um, a second dictionary with the first one you've got. Um, so that'll overwrite any keys that are in the first dictionary, but it'll also add new keys. So here we're updating D3 with another dictionary. Um, in this case, I've just given it using the curly brace syntax, and that will add in a new key for um, key into it. One thing to notice here is that uh, when you do this, D3 is actually changed by the process of doing the update. That's a kind of fairly common thing with the with methods is it can change the the variable to which the methods attached. We then have um, three methods for um, accessing um, items in the dictionary. So get pop and then pop item. So get and pop do something a little bit similar to um, the standard indexing a dictionary with its key. The difference is that it allows you to specify a default value in case the um, key you're looking for is not actually in the dictionary. Um, so here we have an example. Um, if you do um, get d3, so key 5, um, well key 5 is not in fact in the dictionary at all. So um, what that get is equivalent to is saying if key 5 is in d3, then give you back the value associated with the key 
um, in this case key 5, otherwise return the default. Um, and then pop is very similar, except as well as getting the value, it will also delete it from the dictionary. So again, the equivalent code here is if it exists in the dictionary, then um, get it out of the dictionary, get the value from the dictionary, and then delete it from the dictionary. And if it doesn't exist in the dictionary, just return the default value. Um, should say that um, pop item uh, will go and um, return the um, last key and value that was put in the dictionary um, and remove and delete it from the dictionary as well. So um, you can use pop item if you put it in a loop, it'll go and um, gradually empty out the dictionary until it runs out of values. Um, Dictionary keys don't have to be string. So all the examples we've used so far, the dictionary keys have been a string. But in fact, it can be anything which um, Python can turn into a unique code. So there's this process called hashing, where Python converts whatever you've given it as the key into something that's a, a, a number that's unique. And that's what it's actually using to work out how to refer to it in the dictionary. Um, so this means you can have a dictionary where you have some keys that are strings some keys that are floating point values, keys that are booleans, and in this example here are given, the last value is a tuple. So in this dictionary here, you've got first of all a string key, um, uh, you've got um, a floating point value as a key, you've got a boolean value as a key, and then you've got this tuple 1, 2 as a key. Um, and therefore you can then say give me the dictionary value in D4 that corresponds to the key that is true. And you'll see in this example it correctly returns the, the string boolean value, which is the value that we've stored associated with the true key. Um, so as I said, we'd use an example there of where we'd used a tuple to go and refer to an item. Um, it would be tempting to think you might be able to go and do this with a list, but actually it doesn't work. And the reason this is the case is that lists can be changed um, and therefore you can't make them into a single value. They can't be hashed. So if you try using a list um, as a key for a dictionary, it tells you it's unhashable type. Um, if instead of making a list, I've made that a tuple, then it would work. And we'll come back and discuss tuples a bit later in the second part of this unit.